Hello, and welcome back to the Struggle Security YouTube channel. We're normalizing struggling in cybersecurity, and this is your first time here. I want you to hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell for you to get more and more of this type of cybersecurity content coming directly to your notifications and so that you can keep up with the channel and see what we're doing here. Hopefully this is valuable to you, and I want you to subscribe so you can see more and more of this content. So today we are going over a subject called Linux Basics for a Career in Cybersecurity. Now I have a very good friend on YouTube. His name is Keep It Techie or, or Josh. He has a channel that I'm gonna put in the description here. His channel again, like I just mentioned, is Keep It Techie and he goes over all different types of Linux distributions, all different types of tools that are used in Linux and he even hits on some cybersecurity content too. So I wanna reference him for more information about Linux, but today we're gonna jump into Linux for cybersecurity careers and some very basic things. And why would you wanna know Linux? Why would you want to know this operating system? And I would propose to you that Linux is something that's used by many cybersecurity professionals. And if you're looking to transition or if you're new to cybersecurity, gaining some basic skills or some basic understanding of Linux will help you in developing some of those technical skills, right? You might want to go for those soft skills. You might want to go for those non-technical cybersecurity roles. But this one right here is helping you develop some of those technical skills. So let's jump right into it here. And the first thing that you might want to know is that what operating systems are actually running Linux or what operating systems do you use for cybersecurity that run Linux? And I think the first one that probably a lot of people have heard of is that Kali Linux. And Kali Linux is specifically an operating system used for penetration testing and overall offensive security type of testing and security assessments. It's Debian based, which is a flavor of Linux, and that is Kali Linux. And that's probably the most widely used cybersecurity distribution of Linux. So now that we move on from Kali, we want to jump over to the Parrot operating system, which is a Linux distribution based on Debian with a focus on security, privacy and development. Very similar to Kali, they have a lot of the same type of capabilities. So you can just pick one or the other to use, but they're very similar in offensive cybersecurity focuses. Then you get over to something like digital forensics and incident response, which is another specification in cybersecurity. And the SIFT workstation or the SIFT operating system is another one that's been developed by the SANS Institute, specifically a gentleman named Robert Lee. And the SIFT is a collection of free and open source incident response and forensics tools developed and designed to perform detailed digital forensics examination in a variety of settings. Now, when you talk about digital forensics and incident response, you talk about where there's practitioners that might be going out and responding to when hackers get into systems. You might be pulling off full images. You might be analyzing malware. These are the type of things that you would do with the SIP workstation. Now let's jump over to a bit of that defensive type of cybersecurity. And that's when you're looking at an operating system called Security Onion. And this one, Security Onion is a free and open source Linux distribution for threat hunting, which is looking for the evil or looking for the bad guys in networks and systems. Enterprise security monitoring is that not only looking for the bad, but also monitoring the systems to make sure they stay in a good state and also log manage it. Computers, devices, systems give off all types of logs, whether from network logs, whether from device logs, whether antivirus alerts, and Security Onion is your operating system for that. I've used it when I used to work as a security architect for a Department of Defense type of contract. And what I was doing, I was standing up an individual, um, what you call security um, incident and event monitoring or management system, a SIM. And I was using that in order to ingest all of the logs. I was using Security Onion and really evaluating and monitoring the security of that DOD or Department of Defense environment. So Security Onion is great. I've used it. And the last one, which is probably a more lesser known one, but it's very specific to my focus in cybersecurity. Um, and that's the controlthings.io. That's also a Linux operating system. So it's a Linux distribution to aid in the cybersecurity assessment and penetration testing of industrial control systems or ICS, including SCADA, DCS, IOT, IIOT systems, field devices, and field buses. Those are a lot of acronyms, but pretty much to boil it down is for those of industrial and manufacturing environments, doing security assessments and pen testing in those type of environments. And that's the control things that IO. All of these that I mentioned will be there in the description for your viewing pleasure. 
and those are kind of the like the small list or the curated list or the most popular Linux distribution for cybersecurity purposes. Now let's move into our next item, our next item here. We are gonna look at how are we gonna develop and what are the different commands and the basic commands that we would use for the Linux operating system when we're doing cybersecurity things. So let's just start to get familiar. Let's just start to get comfortable and I'll go ahead and transition over here into my Kali Linux box. Here we go. Now we are in the Kali Linux box, which is one of the, the distributions, the Linux distributions that I was telling you all about. And let's just go over some of the commands and I'll kind of explain some of these basics as we're going through this little tutorial that I'm giving you here. So the first one that I want to go over is that of the PWD or the present or present working directory command. So right now I'm on my Kali Linux box and I see that I'm running. You all can see that I'm running within a virtual machine using VMware Workstation. And I want to use the PWD command present working directory. And that tells me that the directory that I'm in or the folder um, that I'm in is in the Kali folder, right? That that's, that's my present working directory. Now say for instance, I want to go somewhere else, right? I want to go somewhere else within the Win Linux operating systems. I'm going to use the CD command, but actually first I want to see where I'm at, where I'm going to use the LS, which is the list. So these are the files or the directories that are within the Kali directory. And I'm seeing I have desktop, document, downloads, music, pictures, public, like templates, and videos. That's Those are the directories where I can go. Now, if I wanna change directory or go to a different part of the Linux operating system, I'm gonna press CD and as it has here, I'm gonna go to my desktop. Now, when I do PWD, it says that I am in desktop because I changed my directory or CD into the desktop directory. I'm gonna also use clear here because this will start to, this will start to build, build up where you won't be able to see anything. So let me go back to my LS, my list, I'm listing what's there. And right now I'm not seeing too, too much that's there in that directory. So the next thing that I wanna go after is that of creating different files or creating different directories. Because let me take a couple of steps back because when you look at Linux, Linux is just a big conglomeration or a big collection of files and directories or files and folders. So when you're navigating, you're putting files and execute, that's really a lot of the composition of what the Linux operating system is. So I might wanna create a file. And usually I use the touch command when I'm trying to create a file or something. So as I'm here on the desktop, I'm gonna call touch and I'm gonna call it strugsec. Right, so I'm making a file called strugsec. And as you see here, it just popped up. And let's say I wanna open this, this file. I'm gonna open this file and I'm gonna put some text in here and I prepared something already. I found this um, on online, just some random information about a high school. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm going to throw this within the strugsec the strugsec um, file that I just created. I'm, and I'm gonna save it. So let me clear again. And LS, I'm here on the desktop. I have a strugsec file. And one thing that I wanna do here is that I wanna actually open it and see what the contents are of that file. Cause I just put some information in there. Let me go to cat and let me do strug, oops, struggle sec. That was something I created earlier, but I'm just gonna go to strug sec, right? I'm gonna press enter. And as you see, all of that information that I put in there before about Brian Fordenbog and that goes to this school and Sonora High School, that information is there. And that's using that cat command that stands for concatenate, which allows us to view or even at times create files within a Linux operating system. I know I'm zooming here, but I'm gonna provide you with some resources at the end where you'll be able to go over this again, step by step and even slower. So that is that one. Sometimes when you're also within the Linux operating system, you might want to, oh, I said that I wanna make a directory. So that command is make dir, and I wanna call it struggle, right? Just, just, just staying with the thing. So if I do an ls here, actually let me clear. If I do an ls, I see that I have actually created this particular directory. And you see the different colors, right? The files are, typically like a basic and non-bolded and white um, 
white text color, but the folders or the directories are a bolded and dark, dark blue. I can actually move that file that strug, let me do strug sec file into the struggle, into the struggle folder just with this command here with this MV. So I'll press enter. And as you see, that file had dis disappeared. I do an LS and I can change directory into struggle. And lo and behold, there is my struggle sec file. So there's a lot of different little, right? It's very fluid. You can move around here, move files, create files. You can even edit files. But one thing that I want to do here is that as I'm here within struggle, I'm going to show you something called grep or piping, right? I wanna show you how I can use this on the desktop or within the terminal. So I am seeing, I'm here in the struggle directory. I'm seeing strugsec here, but I wanna search for certain things within strugsec. And so let me cat it again, right? It's cat strugsec. And I wanna see every line that mentions 2013. Let's just say that. So let's do that. So let's do cat struggle sec, and then I can pipe and use another command, command line command in uh, Linux called grep. And that allows me to search for specific things within files or directories um, on the Linux operating system. So then I'm gonna look for, I'm gonna grep for 2013. And that should return to me every single line that has 2013 in it that is within the strug sec file. And as I see September 17th, 2013, 24th, 2013, I'm seeing every single line, even to the point where I'm seeing, um, this is part of the address in Lakewood, California. So we're seeing a lot of different information here. We're kind of getting a little comfortable. And these are some of the basics of kind of zooming around, really understanding how to work with the Linux operating system. I'm gonna show you a couple of more things and then I'm gonna to get to the resources here. So now we wanna look at processes that are running. I'm gonna go into the home directory. Uh, actually, home directory is there. Okay, that's where we were when we first started. Now I wanna show you how to look at the processes running because all operating systems are running processes, whether they're executables or whether they're, 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 they're any type of files, they are running on the different operating systems. So within Linux, you view those running processes by pressing the PS. PS gives you the running processes on your operating system. Now we see that there are two here and we have the PID numbers and your TTYs and the time that's been running. And this is actually what I'm running right now. That's what this terminal is. It's the Z shell. And this PS is showing the one, the, the command that I just ran. Now say for instance, there's a new process because a lot of times hackers run processes on disk, um, the ones that are less skilled, and they will be able to show up right here within the running processes. So let me just run another command or another program called Wireshark. And Wireshark is a network um, uh, traffic capturing type of tool. And I'm gonna run it right, right here, open it up. I actually put that and sign um, at the end of it so that I'll continue to be able to run my um, um, programs or run my commands in this particular shell. So before we saw that these were the only two processes running. Now I'm gonna do PS again, and look what just came up. We saw that as I pulled up Wires, Wireshark that that popped up and a dump cap also popped up. That's another accompanying program that runs with Wireshark. So very powerful tool here. But we can even get even deeper into that of uh, processes running on an operating system within Linux. So let's do PX and this do aux, which kind of gives, and this is kind of getting ahead of myself, but it gives them, it gives you the ability to see the processes running. Um, um, kind of give a screenshot of all of the processes running, not only by you, but by the whole operating system. And boom, it gives a screenshot here. And as you see, um, we're seeing several things that are running as root, and we see also several several things that are running as RT kit. We see C O L O R D, and I think we also see Cali. So these are some different users running different processes, the times when they started, and whatnot. And to get a screenshot of this for every ten seconds, we will run a command called top. 
And this is almost equivalent to what, what you see within a Windows operating system of a task manager. And again, you see our Wireshark running. We see different things running. We see, we, we, we see things that are just all associated with what's happening on this Linux machine. I just wanna keep it very basic and high level so that I won't drown you in the details because you can get very deep into this. And I want you to, right? After this, I'm gonna provide you with resources. And that's exactly where we're going at now. So you have seen some of these basic commands where you're starting off by running um, commands on the command line, which gives you the ability to understand how to navigate a Linux operating system. And we use these commands all the time in cybersecurity. Now I'm gonna move on to our resources and let me pull that up now. I wanna start with my first resource here. And this one is a great book by a great organization called No Starch Press. Let me zoom in a little bit here for you. And No Starch Press, they offer a lot of different books that are for cybersecurity, computer security, hacking, threat intelligence, you name it. So this book spe specifically goes into Linux basics for hackers. And you can buy it straight from the website. You can also get it from Amazon too. And there's so many different re reviews. I've read this book, it's great. And I think it's very applicable to really understanding some of those basic things for cybersecurity uh, for people who are beginners. Let's go to our second resource here. And I think I've referenced this maybe before. And this is the Try Hack Me um, website. And they have all these different rooms, all these different modules that you can go through. And this more of like a computer based type of training here where they have a room on Try Hack Me called Linux Fundamentals. And here, let me just open up one of these. And I think I've started one where Linux fundamentals, they kind of go over some of the basics of, of Linux. As I said, I've started already, but it kind of goes into some of the things that we were talking about. And this one specifically is searching for files on a Linux operating system. That's something that you'll very much so do in cybersecurity using Linux operating systems. So that's one thing in grep, right? I was just talking about grep. And that's another one that, that they mentioned here. So if you're looking for more of a computer-based training, um, you'll look for Try Hack Me's Linux Fundamentals Rule. Now let's go to our next one and our last one that I wanna mention. And <laughs> funny guy, <laughs> well, funny face that I have it paused here. But this one specifically is a YouTube channel called freecodecamp.org. And the specific class that I wanna, or the specific video I wanna reference is the Linux Essentials for Ethical Hackers full info set course. And it's very good. It's a very good course. I've watched it. I've watched a significant portion of it. And it's four hours and 41 minutes. And these are all free resources, except for the, the book. The book you have to pay for, but this is a free resource. His face is so funny. It's making it difficult for me to complete the video, but this it's a really good video and it's a really good training and resource for you to learn Linux for um, hacking. Let me go forward a little bit more here, but it kind of goes into, right? As you saw that I was in a Linux shell, this, this individual, I think it's Hackersploit who also has, yeah, that's, that, that's his logo here. Hackersploit goes into specifics about using um, Linux for ethical hacking. So I do want you all to go into that one. And I think my final resource really is to go over that list of operating systems that I mentioned before and just download them. They're all free. And that's one thing about Linux, free and open source. Download these operating systems and just have a go at it. Use one of those training resources like the ethical hacking or Linux for ethical hackers, and then just go in that operating system and just get comfortable and get familiar with it. And really that will help you in order to develop some of those very basic technical skills when you're looking to get into cybersecurity or transition into cybersecurity. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. And today we have normalized another struggle in cybersecurity. Come back, come back, subscribe, press the notification bell. And I want you to stay struggling and stay coming back for more content where I'm kind of dispelling a lot of those struggles and helping you to transition into the field. Thank you. Come back again. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.